All right, folks, we're back. We're going to continue by doing another empirical formula example. Then we're going to hop over to molecular formulas, which I think you'll like. So um, why don't you try example 10, find the um, empirical formula of this compound that's 36 0.84% nitrogen and 63.16% oxygen. So pause the video and go for it. Okay, welcome back. Remember, we assume we have 100 grams of the compound. So 36.84% of 100 would be 36.84 grams of nitrogen. And 63.16% of 100 would be 63.16 grams of oxygen. So remember, the empirical formula, kiddos, is the lowest whole number mole ratio. So we've got to convert grams to moles. So we're going to multiply both of these by a line. Put grams of nitrogen on the bottom, moles of nitrogen on the top. One mole of nitrogen has an atomic mass of 14.01 grams. And we'll put grams of oxygen on the bottom, moles of oxygen on the top, one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams per mole. So this will give us moles of N and moles of O. So we'll do our math now. So we have 36.84 divided by 14.01. And that gives me 2.630 moles of nitrogen and 63.16 divided by 16 gives me 3.948 moles of oxygen. Now those certainly are not whole number ratios. So to do that, we're gonna divide by the lowest number of moles, 2.630 in this case. And let's see what that gives us. This will be a one and 3.948 divided by 2.630. Oh, that's nice. That gives me a 1.5. Now, that's still not a whole number ratio. So how could I turn a 1 to 1.5 ratio into a whole number ratio? No, no, no. I don't round off the 1.5 to 2. Don't do that. Now, we want to maintain the 1 to 1.5 ratio. Yeah, what if we multiplied these by 2? Wouldn't that give us a 2 to 3 ratio? And those are whole numbers, and that maintains the 1 to 1 and a half ratio. So the formula would be N2O3, dinitrogen trioxide would be the name of the compound. Okay? Now you guys should be pretty solid on empirical formulas, and you're going to, get, going to get a chance to do a bunch of those in class uh, when we see each other next. In fact, you, you found the empirical formula of magnesium oxide in the lab, not too long ago. Well, let's move on to molecular formulas. So the molecular formula is the actual number of atoms of each type in a molecule. Now remember, it is possible for molecular and empirical to be the same. That's not true with the case of water. Water is two hydrogens to one oxygen. That's the empirical formula, and it's also the actual formula for water. So to find the molecular formula, the process is similar to finding empirical formula, but there's one little step at the end. We need to know the molecular mass of the compound as well. So let's dive right into this by doing example 11. We have succinic acid. It's a substance produced by lichens. Lichens, kiddos, you'll learn about in your biology class. Chemical analysis indicates it is composed of 40 0.68% carbon, so out of 100 grams, wouldn't that be 40.68 grams of carbon? 5.08% hydrogen, and the rest, 54.24% oxygen. So we start this off the same way. We want to find the lowest whole number mole ratio to begin with. So we're going to multiply each of these by a line. You guys should be really good at these mole calculations now. We've done so many of them. And if you're not good at it, please come see me. We'll work on these together. All right, put a 1 by mole for each of these. Carbon's atomic mass is 12.01. Hydrogen's is 1.01. And oxygen is 16.00. 
So this will give us moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, and moles of oxygen. So let's plug and chug and see what we get. 40.68 divided by 12.01, 3.387 moles of carbon, 5.08 divided by 1.01, .01, 5.03 moles of hydrogen, and 54.24 divided by 16 is 3.390 moles of oxygen. Obviously, those are not pretty whole numbers, so let's divide by the lowest number of moles, 3.387, that would give me one carbon, 3.387, let's see what that would give me, 5.03 divided by 3.387, that's 1.5 for my hydrogen, and 3.387 for the 3.39. That's going to be a 1. So we'll double each of these to give me the empirical formula, OK? And that would give me a 2 to 3 to 2 ratio. So, so far, we have C2H3O2. Now, that is my empirical formula. I've got that part of the problem done. Now to find the molecular formula, I need to know the molar mass. We need to see what the empirical weight is compared to the molecular weight. So the empirical weight is, you guessed it, the weight of the empirical compound, which would be the weight of two carbons and three hydrogens and two oxygens added together. So let's do that. Carbon's 12.01, so two of them would be 24.02. Each hydrogen is 1.01, .01, so three of them would be 3.03. .03. And each oxygen is 16.00, so two of them would be 32.00. .00. So the empirical weight is 59.05 grams per mole. Now the actual weight is 118.1. That's the actual weight. That is the molecular weight of the compound. Well, let's see how much bigger that is then 59.05. So 118.1 divided by 59.05 is exactly 2. Hmm. So that must mean that the molecular compound is twice as big as the empirical compound. Now remember, the empirical compound, folks, is C2 H3O2. And we want something twice as big. So that would be C4H6O4. And that would be the molecular formula of my compound. So notice the empirical is the lowest whole number ratio. The molecular is the actual ratio. Alrighty, let's try another one. Um, example 12. This time, I'm giving you the molecular weight of 91.1. And the compound is 0 0.608 grams of nitrogen, 1.388 grams of oxygen. And I want to know the empirical and molecular formulas again. Huh, I didn't give you percent by weight this time. How am I going to find out the mass of each? Oh, wait a minute. Didn't I give you the mass of each element here? Yeah, so we don't need to convert a percentage to a mass. We are actually given the mass of each element. We have 0 0.608 grams of nitrogen, 1.388 grams of oxygen. We want to find the lowest whole number mole ratio again, kiddos. So we're going to multiply by a line here to get out of grams of oxygen and into moles of oxygen and get out of grams of nitrogen and into moles of nitrogen. So let's see. This will give us moles of N, and this will give us moles of O. So 0 0.608 divided by 14.01. 14 and that is 0 0.04 four moles of nitrogen and 1.388 divided by 16.00 
is 0 0.08675 moles of oxygen. So to find the empirical formula, we'll divide by the lowest number of moles, so 0 0.0434, so that's one nitrogen, 0 0.0434. Oh, that's two oxygens. So my empirical formula is NO2. Now let's find the empirical weight. Remember, there's one more step to this. The empirical weight would be the weight of a nitrogen, which is 14.01, and the weight of two oxygens which is 32.00. So the empirical weight is 46.01 grams per mole. The molecular weight is 91.1. So molecular weight, 91.1, divided by the empirical weight, 46.01. Let's see what that turns out to be. Hey, that's really, really close to 2. So that would mean that my empirical formula, right here, NO2, needs to be two times bigger to get the molecular formula. So instead of NO2, we would have N2O4. And that would be dinitrogen tetraoxide. OK? All right, so so far today, looks like we have done an empirical formula problem again, and we've done two molecular formulas. So let's do another one, and then we'll call it good for, the, good for today. So why don't you take a minute and do example 13 all by your lonesomes here, then come back to the video, and we'll see how you did. All righty, welcome back. So now I want to find the empirical and molecular formula. I don't like that color. Let's go, let's do this. I want to find the empirical and molecular formulas of a CHO compound. Now the molecular weight is 180 grams per mole. So here we go. 41.0% um, carbon. Wouldn't that be 41.0 grams of carbon out of 100? 4.60 grams out of 100 of hydrogen. And the rest, hmm, what does the rest mean? Well, whatever's left over from 100. So 100 minus 41 minus 4.6 gives me 54.4 grams out of 100 of oxygen. So remember, we want the lowest whole number ratio. Are you guys getting sick of me saying that? I'm getting sick of saying it. We're going to go from grams of oxygen and grams of hydrogen and grams of carbon to moles of carbon, moles of hydrogen, and moles of oxygen. Put a one by mole. Carbon's mass is 12.01. Hydrogen's is 1.01. And I know you've memorized oxygen's mass as 16.00. So this will give us moles of C, moles of H, and moles of O. So 41 divided by 12.01 gives me 3.41 moles of carbon. 4.6 divided by 1.01 gives me 4.55 moles of hydrogen. And 54.4 divided by 16 gives me 3.40 moles of oxygen. We'll divide by the smallest number of moles, which is 3.40. So 4.55 divided by 3.40 is 1.33. And 3.40, that would be 1. Now, these are not whole numbers, so let's triple all of these to make them whole numbers. So we get 3 to 4 to 3. So the empirical formula would be C3. H4O3. Now the empirical weight would be the weight of three carbons, so 12.01 times 3, plus the weight of four hydrogens, so 1.01 times 4, plus the weight of three oxygens, 16.00 times 3, and I get 88.1 grams per mole. Now, the molecular weight is 
grams per mole, and that's the molecular weight. We're going to divide that by the empirical weight, 88.1, and let's see what we get. 180 divided by 88.1, and that gets us 2 again. Hmm. So that means, folks, that this empirical formula needs to be 2 times bigger to give us the molecular formula. So instead of C3H4O3, it would be C6H8O6, which maintains the same ratio. Okay? Alrighty. Uh, you can do example 14 on your own time for some extra practice. That's basically the same calculation. So we'll call it good for molecular formulas today. Talk to you later, and next time we're going to talk about hydrated compounds. See you soon. Bye-bye.